And now our uh, next speaker, uh, Eduardo Apiaro for Operations for Databases. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Um, hi. Uh, as Eduardo said, I'm, my name is Eduardo. So here, today I'm here to share a story about um, operations at the database level, but first I would like to know what kind of audience I have here today. So raise your hand, who is a developer? Okay, thank you. Now a database administrator. One, two, three, okay. So, uh, as you see, a database administrator has to deal with a lot of developers. And uh, this talk, or this is a story that uh, it's, it was my journey uh, where we start, we went from Scrum, we went from Kanban until we reached what we thought was the best approach for us. So uh, we will talk about automation, source control, continuous integration, and continuous delivery. But keep in mind, that's why I put here the disclaimer, this is a journey that happened in the specific context, and the context is everything. So that means, when I say continuous integration, that means something that only us at that time understood. Like if he was building manually, for us was continuous integration. But it's not what it comes in literature, right? So keeping that in mind. So this is the journey. So before Scrum, more context. We were a five person team and we were really agile at that point. So every problem could solve going to a coffee machine. Five people, we just have to turn around, talk to each other. That's it, simple. But then, what happens to every project, to every team, things get serious. We, we start to grow. The database, what initial was a little kitty, starts to grow and start to show the first time their clause. And uh, this was the first scenario. We have some applications that share a database. How many of you recognize this scenario? How many of you have a database exclusively connected to one single database, uh, application? Okay, one, two, okay, good for you. Okay, so if you share a database, you have to communicate with the other part, with everything is involved. So we start to grow, we went from five to 10, and then since we are sharing the database, the coffee machine was not effective anymore. We start to send emails. We start to have dashboards. We start to think that we should do something about it. And then Scrum comes in. And we started what I call it the magic Scrum. So it's like yesterday, we didn't know what, is, what was Scrum, and today you are doing it. Congratulations, you are a Scrum team. So, since we, we came from a, a, a scenario, we didn't have to take decisions. And then, managing said, okay, for now we are a Scrum, a scrum team. You have self-organized, so organize yourselves. And we are very happy because finally we have freedom 
to do what we need. But the first time, okay, the first question, okay, so what do we need to do? And okay, let's look to the Scrum Guide. And we put operations to do pure Scrum. So we had two week sprint, we had the sprint goal, but the operations team was too reactive because we have to take care of the fires that happen in production at the same time we are doing Scrum or we had a sprint goal. So this was a kind of strange for us. Like having a plan, have a sprint goal, and then we have to stop that, fix production, fix bugs, or put again the, the system running, and then in the end, in the retro, we saw we, you are too reactive. And this was the scenario. The difference was we had more people on each team. And, okay, okay. Do you know this team? So imagine you have a JavaScript, a Java, a Java team, and a, or a C Sharp team, and we had a T SQL team. That means a team that only job was to write T SQL scripts and inject in the database, like a normal developer will do. The difference was it was telecom engineers. So we had a problem. It was database was a bottleneck. Application was, was, was already doing this, source control, continuous integration, continuous delivery, or at least it had a pipeline, a process that was visible for everyone. Database didn't have that. So if a new feature want to go to production, they have to talk with us, with the database team, or the operations team. In this case, it was the same. So by Skype, by email, by phone, wherever, they have to align, because I cannot put a feature for that, that is a login without a, that, that column on the database. And I cannot drop a column or a table without a line with application. So I talk, so I talk, okay. I went to the developers, in this case a special one, with a friend of mine, and I said, okay, how can we solve this? What do we have to do to make our weekends more easy? At least to have a weekend. Uh, so we thought, okay, why don't we take the same approach as the application? So why not? What is so special about database that we cannot simply put on the same pipeline? Anyone want to guess? Data. Before, after end deployment, you have to keep data. You can make a bug, put in production, that your customer will be unpleased, but yeah, you can report, you can create an issue. Uh, you can have your application uh, down, your manager will be upset, but if you lose data, not only your manager will be upset, but your organization will lose a big time in your reputation. Some companies went bankrupt because they lost data. So, the problems we want to fix. Communication or synchronization between app and database. Traceability. When you have an environment or a database where everyone has owner rights or you can do whatever you want, nobody knows what is happening. And manual database process that prevents you to 
implement something that it's called CICD that bring you a lot of benefit. But if you have a weak spot on your process, that weak spot will sink your process. And this, this is the perfect scenario to have afraid of release because things could, could go wrong. Nobody wants to delete database on production, no one. And of course, the bugs in production. Sometimes we catch the bug, sometimes your customer captured that bug. And uh, at that time, database was kind of dark magic and we, we kind of end over to that, the specialist, the, the voodoo database specialist, so, because nobody wants to touch that. So, who was keeping the pace of the, the development cycle? It was database, because the weakest one, the weakest one determines the, the pace, the cadence of the release. So how we solve this? So we took the same approach as the application. We put, so we have to control the way database change and we have to invest in automation. Because database change is nothing more a T SQL script. A script is just a piece of code. So the first decision was, let's do that. And by automate that, we get the control that we need to get some speed. We, st we stopped to work, uh, uh, we started to have a history of changes. We start to trust in our process and we decrease, we reduce of the human intervention. So we, we went or we tried to go from the art of the deployment of the engineering of the deployment. So don't get me wrong, this was, what I'm talking here is not, it's the beautiful part. This journey took me three years and a half. I spent one year and a half to reach this. I took one year and a half to convince the main team that write T SQL scripts to do source control. Because they work, at, so they open management studio, write the script, inject, and that's it. Someone else problem to put that in production or even they can do that. And someone have to, in the Sunday afternoon, have to open the computer and have a, with a big hammer to fix database. And okay, the first step was, okay, you cannot do that. That is impossible to manage that process. So we have to put our change on the script. You have to store that script on the source control system we start to have traceability. What changed it, who changed it, when it changed it, and special why it has to change. Because you have, in one hand, you have developers always going to change. I want to change, I want a new feature. Operation and database, I don't want to change. I want stability. Why, to, why I need to change It's working? If it worked, I don't want to touch on that. We start to have SQL as documentation. We didn't have to write a wiki to know what, or send an email. We start to share a code base because developers and operations could read the same script. And by doing that, we set up a common language. So we reduce or enforce some standards that everyone could understand. We started with uh, the T-SQL team, and then we went, and since it, it worked, we took that approach to all the organization. 
In the process, we had to take a, another decision. The way we describe the, the database change. Source control, or the migrations approach or the state approach. Okay, so this is more, so in the state, in the state approach, you have a current state, you have a target state, and you have a, an engine that generates that change. So that is automatically generated. In a migration state, you have a human writing that change. So what is the best approach? It depends on the way you work. We use it both for different moments on the release software uh, process. But uh, we normally use more this because this uh, gives more power to the developer. So this allows us, for example, to a developer and database in a DBA to do a code review together because they write a script, they see the change, or alter table, uh, add column, they know what is happening. In this approach, a generator will do that for you, and then a database administrator will check if that is, makes sense. Because in the state, some things like context, it's very important, okay? So we decided, okay, let's go with the migrations. Mainly. So we, we, set it, uh, we put a set, uh, set of rules and expectations. We define frontiers, who is responsible by what, and the result is we have a system. Could be Git, could be Mercurial, and we use it a tool, it's Flyway. And everyone on this, picture, had to write a migration, put on source control, uh, and then someone will put on the pipeline, and that pipeline will deploy automatically to the develop environment, or the test environment. And then someone will do that, uh, will validate that change. Okay, so some, some lessons learned from that process. So we discovered that Small batches, it's better for us. So we just, it's just a matter of reducing the, the uh, friction area. So if we start to see, the funny part is by putting the, the rule, it's very simple. In one script, you have one operation type in one object. So if I want to create a, a table, I put a script create table. If I want to insert on that table, I put another script, put the insert table. Yeah, the first reaction was, why I need two scripts? Doesn't make sense. I could put one big script. What, right? I could, in the end of the day, I have a big script. But the game is, what if, don't forget you are sharing the database. If someone is doing something with the same table, like changing a column, that to review a 100 lines script is very different of re, uh, review two lines script, okay? That's the point of putting in small batches. And a funny part, also, we start to identify patterns. So do you see that, like matrix, that image they have to that green screen, you start to uh, drop uh, migrations, you already anticipate what will happen in the database. So we, I call it, a, we establish a contract. It's nothing more than a, a mechanism that we use to communicate and collaborate between different teams around database. The first was easier, don't lie to the pipeline, so we didn't took so much effort and time for someone to go around the pipeline. Because, the second point, everything is negotiable. So, if the pipeline is not working for you, we need, we need to change the, data, the pipeline. Pipeline should work for everyone involved in the process. 
So as you see, we, we started to build the first block, source control the, the migrations, the database changes. And then that feeling of, hey, we are operations team. We didn't, uh, Scrum shouldn't be for us. Why we need this uh, sprint goal? Why are we reacting? We're supposed to react. So let's do Kanban. And we fail it redundantly. Why? Because of this. Kanban didn't suppose even, don't, don't have iterations. Why, why in hell we, we thought Kanban had iterations? It was a big mistake. And don't forget, this was it's a, a learning journey. With, at that time, we thought we should have iterations on Kanban. I don't know why. Uh, but it was a bad choice because the cadence. So if, if the development team was working in a two, two weeks cadence, and I have four weeks, I could wait four weeks. Developers don't, right? So that misalignment didn't work, and we just, we didn't took much time to figure it out. And we went for Scrum or Kanban. All this work, all that work. So, let's align on the cadence. Rhythm, it's very, very important. So let's put two weeks. Yeah, we have, we even put a sprint goal, but we define a slack. A slack f to react. So our sprint goal was not more, is more, so we have to improve this on the pipeline. We have to improve this server. But we keep always a slack to react because we know systems fail. We need to operate that systems. And by doing that, we start to have the pace. We start to gain that muscle that allow us to not only to improve our process, improve what we need to do, but also to satisfy our customers that was the development teams. So we went from in that process, we had source control, then we started to build the package, and we deliver in the target server. Only this, it's only by pushing, by co uh, committing and push. And then to test and then promote to QA and then approve, someone will have to review and approve that to production. But at least we have a contract, a process. And we could involve not only applications, but also database and infrastructure. Because at that moment, we also want to migrate to the cloud. So infrastructure as code. So why DevOps? At that time, it was more or less five years ago, we didn't call it DevOps. I think that is the, problem, the main problem of DevOps definition. It's like common sense. It's very hard to, to have a, a definition, at least, that everyone can agree. So what we, on that journey, and don't forget, it, nothing of this was easy. We have to change the, the way that people work, the people they think about it. But we could show, we started by a group of people by sharing the same will. We thought, okay, developing is not enough. We have to deliver. To deliver, you have to communicate with all that is involved. And let me say, we we didn't we don't communicate very well. It's, I think it's the the worst skill that we have. I, that's why S code works very well because S code allows to reduce the communication that you need to do. So, the camps. We started, we changed the way we work. So we 
made a small culture thing, a culture change. Of course, we, it was this, we have to talk, we have to show results, so this is better because it allows us to put this on production in 10 minutes. Independent of the, the number of clients that, who, that, who, that we have. So we invest in automation by, we went for zero, zero automation, so it, it was really easy to, to improve. We went from zero to almost everything. Uh, we, we conquered the flow visibility. So ops and apps and development team was able to see the representation of the process in the pipeline. That was especially useful when you, came, you have a new joiner and they just have to look the pipeline and, oh, this is the way you do it to put in production. Yes, that's it. And we spread the contract across the organization. So it worked for a set of teams. Why don't we apply to the organization? This allows us to, not everyone on the organization was able to share, to improve this process. And that's why the DevOps way. So the first way was we increased the flow visibility. We shared that, that process. It doesn't matter what the tools, as long as they work for you. We increased the feedback. If a build fails, the database and the development team will receive a notification in order to fix that build. It was database, database comes in and help. It was application, the developer comes in and help. And we increase the knowledge base. Developer and database administrators start to make a code review together. So instead of, oh, this developer don't, don't know anything about database. They, they do it in the code review. So you don't put like this. You have another, a different way. So developers start to learn database changing. And database start to see how developers work. Because one thing is managing that data. Another thing is stored data. So some, some results. So we went from 100% manual, about everything automated, automated in the pipeline. Be aware that it's always in someone in your organization will try to break the system, always. Uh, we were able to process 200 scripts per day. I think one year we counted it was more or less 10K. And we went to, from supporting one customer to four customers at the same time. We were very fast. <laughs> so, questions? No one has any kind of questions? Uh, no one believes. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yeah. Over there? Yeah. Over there? Mm -hmm. This is my part. This is process, so I love it. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, so from what I understood from the presentation, uh, you still keep the databases and application pipelines uh, separate, right? Uh, why not doing that uh, together? So, so why not having the application being responsible for changing the data, having the scripts and reverting the changes and ensuring all that? Because the application doesn't work without the correct data set, so. Yeah, normally that is true. I, I saw some business only database. Uh, but uh, we started with developing independent data, uh, pipelines with the database going in one pipeline and application going to a different pipeline. But uh, we evolved um, 
special. In spe it took some time, but uh, it was the first team was uh, the first team was able to do that, to put in the same pipeline, application and database. Because it's true, application cannot live normally. Don't live without application. And most of the most of the change are triggered by development. So, yeah, I agree with you when you say applications should be together with the database. I normally say that is the best approach, but it, it's always, it depends on the use case. Okay, cool, thanks. So does anyone have any additional questions? No? In that case, thank you, Eduardo.